This is George Dion for KNAC.com, and I'm here with drummer Jerry Gaskill of the band King's X. How you been, man? Good? Yeah, you know, I'm hanging in there. All right. Taking it in, taking in the new world and doing the best I can with it. Absolutely. I want to thank you for taking the time to speak with KNAC today. Sure, absolutely. Thanks for having me. No problem. We'll... uh We'll get started with a question that I ask uh, everybody right off the bat. If I knew absolutely nothing about King's X, how would you describe the band's music to me? Oh, to me, I always say when people ask me to describe King's X, I say, well, it's some kind of rock and roll. That's basically what it is, some kind of rock and roll. And from there, once you hear it, you can determine yourself how you want to label it. It's definitely rock and roll. I love that description. I think that's <laughs> enough. Appropriate description of the band, and you guys have a new album out right now. It came out September 2nd, Three Sides of One through Inside Out Music. This is your first full-length album in 14 years. This one's kind of been long in the making. You started writing it in 2010, correct? Well, we're always writing, so we've been writing always. So songs can come from 20 years ago, two days ago, whenever. So, you know, it's just... The new King's X record that came out September 2nd. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a, a lot of guys during the lockdowns, uh, they kind of did the modern way of recording as far as trading files back and forth. But King's X went into the studio for this one, correct? We did come into the studio. We all went to L.A. at uh, Black Sound Studios, Michael Parnon. He produced it. It's his studio. And we actually did all the recording before the pandemic. And uh, in 2019. So, yeah, we were all in a room together. Everything was played. Everything you hear is us performing it, every note, every sound. And uh, so, yeah, that's how we did it. In King's X, everybody kind of shares their share of the songwriting and kind of the singing and kind of the way that the song develops. Is that true? That is kind of true. We all write songs. We all bring songs in. And uh, once we decide what we want to do, we all work on it together. And from there, it becomes a King's X song. Even if it's exactly as somebody wrote it or whatever, once we all put ourselves into it, it just becomes a King's X song. And, uh, and there's, it could be, it could come about any, any number of ways. Again, it's just King's X making King's X music. <laughs> <laughs> you guys like to keep it simple. I like that. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying it's always simple, but <laughs> it's King's X. <laughs> uh, this latest album, Three Sides of One, is on Inside Out Music. I had read that you initially shopped this to a different record label before returning to Inside Out. We had discussions with another label, yes. You know, and, and like any record, I think there's, you know, we field offers or whatever. And uh, we finally landed with Inside Out Sony. and. I think it was the right cho right choice. Let's talk a little bit about the songs. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what you've released so far. You have the song Let It Rain. If you want to talk a little bit about uh, the story behind that song. Well, that's a Doug song. He wrote it. And uh, he could probably speak more about it than I could as far as lyrics and all and the writing of the song. But uh, it was, uh, again, another King's X song. We got into the studio. We uh, worked on it together, all uh, added our ideas and our thoughts, our input, and it became what it is. And you can hear it now. <laughs> Do you as a band get to decide which songs get released to promote the album before it's released, or is that a decision that the record company makes? Well, I like to think that all decisions ultimately are made by us when it comes to the music. So, so I'd say, yes, there are suggestions. And we can approve, disapprove, and uh, take it from there. Okay. Uh, you've released three songs so far, Let It Rain, Give It Up, and All God's Children. Are you guys planning a fourth single at all? Uh, I'm not sure about that. We might. I haven't uh, heard that we're going to do anything yet. But hey, this is just the very beginning. We just started. September 2nd, what is today? The, the 9th? It's been yes. a week. <laughs> it's been a week so you know there, there's a lot ahead hopefully we'll, we'll see what happens 
Okay, there is one song that you wrote that I know about. It's called She She Called Me Home and it's about your uh your health issues with your heart and your surgery. So if you want to talk a little bit about that song. Yeah, I did write that song. And, it, and, it, and actually, the lyrics do talk about that situation from my point of view. And uh, uh, th there's another song on the, on the record too called Take the Time that I wrote that also deals with some of that. And, um, and uh, it just seemed to be the thing that was on my mind to write about. You know, and I, and I felt I need to. With, with she called me home. The way that one came about, I think it was at a Christmas party after the surgery, the second heart attack. I think it was the second heart attack, and uh, I've had two heart attacks. The first one killed me, and the second one just kind of helped mend me even more. But anyway, I was talking to a friend who is who I play with around town. His name's Bob Berger. We play a lot around town. He's great, great singer songwriter. He's got a great new record out. I played all the drums on it. Check it out. It's called The Domino Effect. It's cool. <laughs> and uh, we were talking. I said, you know, I'm thinking, I, th I think I might just stop. You know, I don't know if I'm going to do this anymore. I'm just, it's just too much. Everything just weighing down on me. I just don't feel like I, I want to or can do this anymore. And he just looked at me and said, just stop all this nonsense, man. You will get out there and play. You will do this. And that's kind of what sparred that, that song when he said that, you know, stop all this nonsense. You will get out there and play. So that's how that came about. I just took it from there. I think a lot of us, when faced with life-changing events, kind of initially want to give up. So I would imagine that music is pretty much your your entire life as far as your profession and your trade and that is something that you're like, you know, when you're faced with this circumstance that you question and call it to doubt. But I would imagine that getting back into the music has kind of given you that closure on the portion of your life that you were going to give up on. Well, I have definitely come to realize that music is who I am. It's what I do. And during the pandemic, we, we hadn't done shows in two and a half years because of the pandemic. And I was thinking, okay, we're done. We're not, we're not going to play anymore. This is, I don't even care anymore. I don't care. I don't care about anything. <laughs> and then we finally did shows recently. We did three shows. And as soon as we hit the stage and I saw the crowd and the reactions, like, oh my God, this is who I am. This is what I do. And it was very helpful to me to, to realize that once again. And that's good to hear. Yeah, it was good. It was good for me to hear too. <laughs> That's a funny thing about the whole giving up and not wanting to do it anymore and thinking, ah, I don't know if I can do it. Because on the first heart attack, uh, the one who actually killed me, I remember being in the hospital after waking up from being in a coma for a little while. And I knew that we had a tour coming up like the next month. And one of my first thoughts was, you know what? I think I can do this tour. I think I can do it. But of course, I couldn't do it. I can barely even get out of the bed. But uh, those are my thoughts. That's how I think music comes first. You, know? you guys have kind of all had some medical issues get sort of in the way of uh, doing what you love. I, I know that, that Doug had something going on with uh, uh, lymph nodes and a tie has something going on currently. Is that going to affect uh, the band touring going forward? Well, it has affected the touring ties, ties situation. We had to cancel the entire European tour, which we're supposed to be there right now, as a matter of fact. All of September, we were to be in Europe for the first time in quite a while, which is disappointing. And um, I will have to say, because of everything, like we've been talking, just thinking, oh, maybe we won't ever do this again. I don't care. You know, when I first found out, I was like, oh, wow, great. Don't have to go anywhere. I can stay home still. <laughs> but um, I do want to get out there and play. I do want to you know, share the music with people. But uh, he's just not able to leave the country. He has to stay in the country for treatments. And uh, so that's, so we're going to do some shows here in the United States. And that's going to be coming up in, in October. Are you guys going to be playing? How much are you going to be playing from the new album? Do you think? Oh, well, we're going to try to do as much as we possibly can. Yeah. I don't know yet. We haven't started rehearsals. 
well, sort of have on our own, but uh, we're basically going to be try to be prepared to do everything. Not saying that we will do everything. I don't know. We'll <laughs> oh, see when that happens. With such a vast catalog, I would imagine that it's tough putting a set list together. Yeah, it can be. Well, since we're so old now, it's just a matter of the songs that we can actually do. <laughs> can we sing it? Can we play it? Yeah. <laughs> Are there any songs from back in the day that you guys just can't do anymore? It's like, ah, that's way out of range or that's way out of our, you know, we 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 were young guys then. We could play fast. We can't play fast now. Is there anything like that? Probably. Yeah, we just I think we've tuned down as far as we can. So, you know, <laughs> just we, we do what we can. And, and, you know, hopefully the people are happy when they see us. They seem to be. We do the best we can, man. Exactly. And that's all anyone can expect. Yeah. You guys have the latest album coming out. It's already out in multiple formats. You got the digital, the physical CD, you got vinyl, which is making a huge comeback. So it must be kind of cool to see something old become new again. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's a, that's a good way of putting it. Something old becoming new again, because that's exactly what it is. Even even the way you listen to it, I think, is even new, even though it's an old format. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. Are you a fan of Are you a fan of vinyl yourself? Well, uh, I am a fan of vinyl. I don't even have a turntable at home, uh, but I do like vinyl. One of the one of the biggest regrets of my life is the fact that I got rid of all my vinyl. There was a time when I did it. Because I, I needed to pay rent, I was very happy about it. I made a lot. I made pretty good money because I, I had a great collection. But I ended up not having any records anymore, which is kind of sad. That and my baseball cards, I sold them too. But it was all during a time when I needed money. Not that I don't always need money, but <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to sell them while they're worth something. Because if you hold on to them too long, then they're worth nothing. Right, and I did, and and, and I was thankful at the time, but. I kind of regret it now. Yeah, we've all we've all been there. Anybody that collects anything, we've all, we've all been there. But you know, you don't want to be the fool that pays a hundred dollars for an album that's worth a dollar ten years later. <laughs> I've never done that. <laughs> I may have sold them for a hundred; it's worth a dollar. But <laughs> um, this is actually the uh, next year is going to be the thirty fifth anniversary of your landmark debut album, Out of the Silent Planet. What do you? I've read some things about how you guys uh, recall those days, but I'm still going to ask: What are kind of the memories of putting that album together and the response that it received? Well, I do remember us being very excited that we're actually putting a real record out because that's our first real record. We had done other things before, but they weren't real records and this is on a on a label it's going to be promoted and uh i just remember being very very excited about it and we're listening to some of the mixes going wow this this kind of sounds like a record you know and so there was that excitement we got to go out on tour and tour some uh some you know pretty big name bands and uh and the response especially from overseas in england was incredible you know they had us on the cover of their the big magazine, the big Mac, uh, rock magazine, Kerrang! And they're just tooting us as like the the n- n- new, uh, how do they put it? Basically like the new messiahs of, of heavy metal or something like that. I forget exactly. But, but it was all very exciting at the time. I said, oh my God, this is really going to happen. But here we are now, you know. <laughs> and it excites your dog too. And my dogs are very excited about it. Every time I talk about how the side on planet, they just go crazy. They love it. <laughs> they listen to it all the time. <laughs> when when you become when you when you get an album like that that's so well regarded, sort of the pariahs of the music industry start getting their mitts into you and kind of take advantage of the band. And that was kind of something King's X had to deal with. Well, I don't know. We seem to be kind of the darlings of the press, <laughs> but um, which was a great thing. But the press doesn't buy records. <laughs> And uh, so we just kind of always seem to be somewhat under the radar, even though the radar was on us, if that makes any sense. And we've always just been this band that has this recognition, but the world at large doesn't seem to know who we are. Musicians do. 
which is somewhat baffling and honoring at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I had read an interview recently with Doug that said that he he felt that uh, King's X didn't really make any money off their recordings. And I would imagine that the label did, but was he taken out of context or was he looking at it at a different lens? Well, I don't know how much money was made by anybody. I know that we didn't get money from record sales. Because the way that works, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you're aware, you're probably aware, but you know, there's an advance. And until that advance is paid, you know, there's no money to be made. And we haven't made any money yet, so I don't know if they've gotten their money either. <laughs> so we're still trying, man. We're still hoping for that day. <laughs> but here you are, 35 years later, still going strong. So that's that's a feather in your cap. Yeah, we got that. We're still making music. So Doug and Ty, they do a lot of stuff on the side. They do solo records. They do other projects. You kind of dabbled a little bit, but that doesn't really seem to be uh, a focus of yours. Is there a reason for that? Well, uh, I don't know if it's because... I'm slower or I'm more lazy or I just have uh, less desire. It's, I don't think it's less desire. It's just, uh, yeah, I just don't have the motivation as much as those guys, I guess, to do it. And I know during the pandemic, uh, I'd been threatening for years. I want to build myself a studio. I'm going to start making music, man. I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to do it. And during the pandemic, I finally did it. I finally built myself a little studio and started recording some stuff. So I do have, I have some, I have some music in me. I'm sure there'll be another solo record, you know, and I play on other people's records here and there around town. And I do gigs around town with some local musicians, which is fun. So I do that. So what local musicians are you playing with or what projects are you recording currently? Well, earlier I, I mentioned I, I work with a guy named Bob Berger, and I just played drums on his latest record called The Domino Effect, which I think is a good record. A bunch of great musicians. Jimmy Leahy, guitar player, plays with uh, John Wade, plays with Dennis DeYoung, great player. Um, and tonight I'm going to gig with a guy named Todd Robbins. Yeah, local guy. I enjoy playing with him. P.K. Good on guitar, great guitar player. And John Perry on bass. That's awesome. what I'm doing in the Yeah. And where is local for you? Are you in California? I'm in New Jersey. New Jersey. All right. Fellow East Coast guy. Yeah. And since I moved here, I moved here just to be with my wife. I met her and I moved here to be with her. I had no idea what this area was like. And once I got here, I realized it's a treasure house of musicians. And I've ended up playing with people I could only have dreamed of playing with. And it's been incredible. So New Jersey is much more than Bruce Springsteen, right? It is much more than Bruce Springsteen. And I actually and I've actually played with Bruce Springsteen since I moved here. <laughs> it's incredible. Awesome. Yeah, really incredible. All and right. Bon Jovi, all the all the ones that you've heard of, I've been a you know, a part of doing shows with them. All right. There's gotta be a story behind the Springsteen thing. You gotta you gotta elaborate a little more on that one. All right, I'll elaborate a little bit on that one. Uh, there's a guy named Bobby Bandiera who is a he used to be Bon Jovi's second guitar player. And uh, I played with him often around town. We did shows together quite a bit. And he called me one day and said, hey, uh, there's a show coming up and Bruce uh, needs a drummer. You want to do it? It's, a, it's like a benefit for his son's school, I think, at the Stone Pony in Asbury, New, New Jersey. And I said, yeah, of course I want to do it. And as soon as I hopped the phone, I said, oh, my God. What am I going to do? I just agreed to play with Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> I'm going, oh my God, I got to learn, what, how, I got to learn songs. I learn. Anyway, so I ended up doing it. And um, I remember thinking, oh, I'm going to get up there. And he's going to say, oh, well, I'll tell you what. The drummer's not really handling it too well. I think I'll just do it acoustic tonight, okay? That's, that's what I was thinking. So Bruce finally comes in and we do the, the sound check uh, rehearsal thing the day of the show and other guys in the band had already had played with him before. And I said, Hey, look, Bruce never talks to the band. So don't be offended or anything. He just comes in, he does his thing and he leaves and, and we play with him and it's fun and whatever. And so uh, 
I think the first song we did in the sound check was a pink Cadillac maybe. And I wasn't really a Bruce fan at that time. I didn't really know a lot of his music and the music that I did here. I was like, oh, I get it, but I don't really care. And uh, so he, he counts off the song. We start playing. I'm going, oh, wow, this is good. Oh, wow. He, wow, he can play. This, this is great. I dig this. And as soon as we finish the song, my dogs like this story too. <laughs> as soon as we finish the song, Bruce turns around, looks at me and goes, that was great. And then we just kind of hung out the rest of the night and talked. And, you know, he had uh, just done a record with Brendan O'Brien, who produced our dog band record. We had that in common. And we basically hung out the whole night and had a great time. Excellent. That's an awesome story. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are all if, it was, if it was true. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all the questions I have for you about King's X. A uh, great story about Springsteen and kind of your life there too, as well as recovering from two heart attacks to keep doing what you love. And the new album is Three Sides of One. It's out now through Inside Music. And I wish you the best of luck with everything, Jerry. And I hope you make Thank your you. way. Hope you make your way to New England with King's X. I hope so too, man. We'll see what happens. I live day by day. All right, man. That's all we can do, right? That's all we have. <laughs> 